So at the hospital, when they examined his body, they came to us and told us that the heart attack was mostly probably due to the fact that his blood was very thick, almost sticky, they said. And we were all like, what the hell? Why would, why would that happen? And the doctor said, oh, it could be a few things, but uh, first, did he drink a lot of energy drinks? What's up guys, Derek, morepolicemortaids.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about dying from energy drinks. Yes, not a fun topic, unfortunately. You know, dying from energy drinks. What is the probability of that? Has your energy drink consumption been insidiously fucking up your heart this entire time, or what's the deal? This was a video that I was tagged in by Emma Two Legs. She's Emma and she has two legs. She's 31, she slash her, in case you didn't know what she was. She has a bunch of emojis in her bio and also a link to pay her money apparently. So in this video, she discusses the harms and risks and deleterious effects of energy drinks. And they're pretty dramatic. Like the claims made are essentially that energy drinks killed her dad, which we'll get into and then I'll give my commentary. Yeah, copyrighted for sure. I unfortunately have a story. My father dropped dead of a heart attack at age 46. Nobody saw it coming. He was an active guy. He was in good shape. He was young. Never had previous heart health issues. So we were all very confused when he just died of a heart attack. Like massive heart attack. Yeah, I don't even think he felt that he dropped dead. So at the hospital, when they examined his body, they came to us and told us that the heart attack was mostly probably due to the fact that his blood was very thick, almost sticky, they said. And we were all like, what the hell? Why would, why would that happen? And the doctor said, oh, it could be a few things, but uh, first, did he drink a lot of energy drinks? This man drank so many Red Bulls. He would get the little four packs and drink like a four pack a day. And then if he was driving somewhere far, he would get like a couple of those four packs and just drink them all on the drive. The man loved Red Bull. So we told the doctors that and they were like, that's probably it. And after further investigation, they were pretty set on that being what caused the heart attack. Needless to say, uh, me and my family do not drink Red Bull or energy drinks ever. And we're constantly trying to inform people of just how bad they are. Because people seem to know that they're not good for you, but I don't think most people know just how bad they are. So please listen to that guy, listen to me, listen to everybody telling you how dangerous they are because they are very, very, very bad for your health. So we're talking about energy drinks like they're recreational drugs essentially here you know like don't have it you're gonna fuck yourself up guaranteed for some insidious like mysterious reason like energy drinks are just you know chemically gonna fucking destroy your heart like realistically what does it break down to is this something that actually happens this was a study done on red bull actually and this was the acute effects of Red Bull on platelet and endothelial function. Popularity of energy drinks such as Red Bull continues to increase, especially within young adults. Red Bull contains high levels of caffeine and taurine. Individually, caffeine and taurine have been shown to affect platelet and cardiac function. However, no data are available for their combined effect. We therefore tested the hypothesis that Red Bull energy drink alters platelet and endothelial function in young healthy adults. They took 30 healthy volunteers, 19 Males, 11 females, age 22, plus minus two years, participated in the study, platelet aggregation, endothelial function were tested before and one hour after consumption of one can of Red Bull containing 80 milligrams caffeine, not that much, and 1,000 milligrams of taurine. Platelet function, now again, the reason I say not that much is because this is like a cup of coffee, essentially, an equivalency, whereas a lot of energy drinks on the market, like a bang, is like, I don't know why I said bang, <laughs> like bang, it's like 300 milligrams per can. Um, and it has all the other shit in it too. Platelet function was assessed by ADP-induced optical aggregation. I can't even say this. Aggre 
Geometry in platelet-rich plasma, endothelial function was assessed via changes in peripheral arterial tonometry utilizing the Endopat 2000 system. So basically, Red Bull significantly increased platelet uh, function, decreased endothelial function, and the conclusion is basically that there is you know some risk here where increased increased platelet reactivity and endothelial dysfunction are predictors of cardiovascular disease, and there needs to be more you know further insight into what the risks of Red Bull are. Now the thing is, is Red Bull gets put on blast because they are like one of the front runner energy drinks. You know this could have been replaced by you know something else and had a very similar result or much worse for example if bang was put in here in this exact same model what do you think would have happened you know with like fucking almost four times the amount of caffeine per can and you know other shit in it too not that i'm saying any of the other shit is necessarily unhealthy or anything but at the end of the day all this really boils down to is is caffeine consumption in a chronic manner in an excessive manner plus high amounts of taurine, plus glucuronolactone, plus whatever else is in the energy drink as a supplement on top of your current diet model, lifestyle, sleep hygiene patterns, et cetera, going to be an extra risk factor. Is it the energy drink's fault or is it actually your own underlying conditions, predispositions, plus all the factors like your current diet model, your lifestyle, your actual you know cardiovascular fitness? These are all things that are seemingly overlooked in this discussion this uh woman says that the first thing they asked was does he drink a lot of energy drinks and it's just like <laughs> like the that's the first thing it seems like a really like out there thing to assume as like the fucking first thing as the first line cause like not what was there any pre-existing diagnostics like did he have chronically high blood pressure like what was going on there the fact that he had like very very you know, viscous, like not ideal blood, you know, obviously could be exacerbated to some extent by using, you know, heavy amounts of the stuff in the energy drinks. I'm not, you know, doubting that. In addition, it is not clear if he drank sugar-free or sugar. You know, obviously if you're having massive amounts of sugar in a drink every single time, and then you're having four to eight a day or whatever, like you're going to be pretty metabolically deranged i would think like you would not be very very it would be hard to maintain a high level of fitness when you are somebody who is cranking like four to eight like sugar laden energy drinks a day i would imagine like i don't know like obviously you could like work it off but i mean like what's your diet at that point like you're it's probably reflective of if you're doing that like the rest of your diet i would assume is not dialed in uh just based on like the lifestyle factors that i can just fucking parse out here so Anyways, as far as like what is the Red Bull to blame, like at the end of the day, you're being presented a supplement of sorts. Like I guess it's maybe it's marketed as a drink that is supposed to be like completely null and void and fucking, I don't know, completely inert in its effects on health. But at the end of the day, like you're taking it for a acute burst in energy. And every time you give you you know put your body into a state of like sympathetic drive redlining it a bit whatever it is like you're taking away from something else and being putting yourself in a more compromised position like if you're artificially inducing a state of fight or flight for example do you not think that that stress response might have a backlash effect of sorts on some sort of health process in your body you know whether it's you know taking away from high quality sleep whether it's making you more stressed out whether it's causing left ventricular hypertrophy from like chronically redlining your fucking sympathetic nervous system whatever it is like obviously there is a give and take here and to completely overlook that and to assume that because a guy was having like four plus energy drinks a day and who knows what other factors are involved too that you should just automatically blame red bull and like <laughs> you have one Red Bull a day or two Red Bulls a day max and you're like, you know, a, a responsible drinker of it and everything else in your lifestyle is dialed in and you get like, you know, you have baseline blood work and can see like what your predisposition is to what your hematology looks like. Like if he had super viscous, like disaster blood, you know, this is something that probably would have been picked up in a regular diagnostic examination. Now, again, you know, he had no reason to think he had any heart issues, but he never had any baseline metrics even assessed, it seems like. So again, 
This is a fucking shitty situation. I feel bad for her, obviously, and her family. But ultimately, to be like, nobody should drink energy drinks. The shit's toxic, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, the sugar-laden energy drinks. Like, at the end of the day, this is a lot of it is like the laws of thermodynamics, too. When you are having something unhealthy, if you are in a deficit and eating something unhealthy, like, you're probably going to be healthier overall than somebody who is eating in a massive surplus, but it's all healthy food. Like, there are so many right biomarkers that are regulated just by actual lifestyle habits and like energy consumption versus expenditure that if you're having sugar laden shit you're slamming yourself with more an excessive amount of caffeine that is you know putting yourself into a red line state of fight or flight which is then taking away from your ability to get high quality sleep because you're Caffeine, you know, the half-life being like five hours or something. If you have so much caffeine in your system, and you're drinking them all day and it's bleeding into your nighttime, which happens with a lot of people, you're taking away from your high-quality sleep, which also inhibits your ability to have, you know, cancer fighting going on, restorative processes, maintaining high-level cardiovascular health, blood pressure modulation too. Like getting deprived sleep is one of the fast-track ways to cardiovascular disease. And just overlooking all of like the actual downstream effects of the other factors going at play here above and beyond just like oh you had a red bull like that's unhealthy like any other energy drink would have fared similarly in this outcome like if if anything if you have an 80 milligram energy drink like that's like the least risky one in my opinion unless you you had it you know you're trying to compare a sugar free to a sugar one or something like obviously if we were going to be be comparing sugar free zero calorie energy drinks par for par the ones that are going to be more risky are the ones with more risky ingredients at higher dosages you know like which the one that has 300 milligrams of caffeine per can you know probably more risky than the 80 milligram red bull but you know red bull gets put on blast because they are you know the biggest company or something or one of the biggest companies uh, you know it's just how it is you know i'm not uh, surprised to see studies about this stuff in red bull i'm not surprised to hear that this outcome happens in a to somebody consuming in excess you know a drink that is designed to give you energy <laughs> like what you know that's something that i think needs to be an accepted responsibility of the user to some extent to a lot you know pretty much entirely to be honest is understand what you're putting in your body like it's not like red bull is telling you to fucking like you need this drink or something or else you're not going to be able to live a high quality life or function at a i don't know like you're using it for an acute energy boost because you're either underslept or you just really like the thing like there's no there's no nutritional value necessarily unless you're taurine deprived because you're i don't know like a, a vegan who isn't supplementing or isn't you know like diversifying their diet you know adequately like there are, is very little to be gained from these energy drinks from like an actual dietary backfilling perspective for micronutrient micronutrient density so you are using it for the acute you know sympathetic drive enhancement essentially so yeah, there's some risk that comes with that, but I think the user should educate themselves about, you know, do I have chronically high blood pressure? Maybe I shouldn't be using stimulants. Maybe I shouldn't be redlining my sympathetic nervous system and pushing myself into fight or flight perpetually by having, like how many, if you have four to eight energy drinks, like I don't even know what country this is in, in terms of the density of caffeine. Like I know in Canada, there is huge limitations on the caffeine content of energy drinks. So an energy drink here, that's like, I have a monster, it's like 140 milligrams. I have the same monster in the U S it's like 200 or I have a, I don't know, there's some other examples. Like there's uh the rain, rain energy drinks. I think there's some other ones that are like here, 140. And then the States will be like 300. I remember the first time I went to the States, I went to get some energy drinks and I had one. And I was like, Jesus Christ, like this thing is hitting like a truck. And then I realized that it was like double the quantity of caffeine. So I don't know exactly. Maybe Red Bull is like universally like, I don't know, equated across countries. So they don't have, they don't have to tweak it because it seems like in this study, presumably they're using the US one. And if it's 80 milligrams, like I imagine it's the same in Canada too. But at the end of the day, you know, not everyone can respond favorably to a caffeine dose even if it's within, you know, a 400 milligram, you know, parameter that is like generally regarded as safe, you know, there are some people who are extremely sensitive to stimulants who have, you know, one energy drink and are wired out of their fucking tree and have a resting heart rate that's like tachycardic. Like that's the kind of thing that again, individual response and assessing your own health parameters before you supplement with something. Like this is at the end of the day, 
you're putting drugs in your body, supplementing with you know different psychoactive compounds with the caffeine. And um, just because it's generally regarded as safe, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing your due diligence. And ultimately, that's still putting the blame on that. Like, I don't really know what other factors are at play here, but ultimately, anytime you're ingesting this kind of stuff, it is going to come with inherent risk to some extent, but there is nothing that I can tell from the Red Bulls that are like inherently problematic above and beyond assessing your response to it from a stimulatory aspect and as well as making sure you are timing it properly, keeping in mind the pharmacokinetic profile of it where it takes five hours to clear half of it out of your system. So think about how long it's gonna take you to get this caffeine out of your system where it's not fucking up your sleep quality, which will be like the biggest determinant on your state of health moving forward is if you fuck up your sleep every night. Obviously you're gonna need more energy drinks because you're gonna be underslept and feel like shit and have a you know lowered quality of health as well, probably have more energy drinks, and then it's like a vicious cycle. You can see how it kind of piles on itself and insidiously fucks you over over years. But again, like all the predetermined factors, if you don't have those dialed in, don't really know if it's safe for you to do something or not, or don't have like a very, very educated, informed idea about it, um, stuff to be mindful of. So again, I'm not saying it was this guy's fault or anything of that nature, it's just to, for the, staff or the the hospital or whatever to like automatically say like oh he had a red bull like he had red bulls that's definitely it like yeah obviously having four a day if it was like sugar laden not the most ideal thing but i mean like what other factors are there i'm sure there was something that was also exacerbating it on top of that i think most people would do just fine with a couple hundred milligrams of caffeine a day if they have a they're metabolically healthy, they're lean, they're active, they have high quality micronutrient dense diets, um, they don't have genetic predispositions from a cardiac aspect, which again, you know, if you're gonna be using hundreds of milligrams of stimulants per day, like probably something you should have screened beforehand too. And if you're in your 40s, you know, assessing your cardiovascular disease risk would be prudent. You know, it's not it's not that hard to, especially if you're in your states, in the states and you have access to high quality self-service labs and, you know, medical diagnostics and whatnot, um, just by paying for it out of pocket, like again, in Canada, it's fucking ruthless. You actually have to have a literal goddamn heart attack to get something like an echocardiogram. They will not give it to you just, you know, proactively because you want to assess your health. In the States, you can literally like pay for diagnostics and go get them done. Um, something that would be worthwhile to do, especially if this is something that's going to be part of your lifestyle long term. So again, even things as basic as caffeine, you know, should not be overlooked as entirely inert compounds that are harmless. Any sort of relationship with a drug has a give or take relationship. And if you are pushing your body in an unnatural direction, you can expect some sort of backlash to some extent, likely. You know, and it'll be more severe in certain individuals, but it's kind of on the user to assess and self regulate appropriately. So, you know, it's unfortunate. Obviously, some people have genetic predispositions or factors that they can't really, you know, predict with any reasonable accuracy you could actually have you know an echo and like get a fucking calcium score done and like see what everything is and have it look totally fine and then still have a jammer you know there's been numerous cases of bodybuilders who had spotless records of health seemingly at least based on their you know medical oversight that they had uh done you know spotless blood work as well like blood work does not show the whole picture, doesn't even show your blood pressure, you know? A very obvious thing to be keeping track of too, if you are consuming four energy drinks a day, like what does your blood pressure look like? Are you chronically pushing into hypertensive crisis? Like, you know, that would be hugely contributing to harder to push around blood in your body from heightened pressure. It's going to be more difficult to get everything circulating around your system. It's just like basic fucking function of your physiologic process is being inhibited by um, something that you could have caught if you just had a blood pressure cuff, which to be honest, I think most people should have who are using drugs chronically, which I treat, I would treat caffeine even responsibly as a drug, to be honest. So anyways, a lot of things um, that I think are overlooked by just cursory glancing over like, oh, eat, drink energy drinks, that's it and not looking at anything else. Like for when, it, when you actually look at a Red Bull cannon, look at the back, you know, you have some artificial sweeteners, you know, how problematic is that going to be in the quantities in the energy drink, you know, from the evidence provided to date that we've seen, not in like rodent super dose studies and shit, seems to be relatively benign. When you look at some of the other stuff like synthetic B vitamins or whatever, 
How problematic is that going to be when they're water soluble and you can just piss them out? Maybe you just have expensive pee. Maybe that's the result. Um, other things, you know, glucuronolactone, you know, some of the more unknown compounds. Maybe you should be, you know, researching what that does. Taurine, is that going to be problematic for, you know, platelet aggregation or in the opposite side of the spectrum? Caffeine, how problematic is that going to be cranking your sympathetic drive up and uh, having your heart rate jump a little bit or having your blood pressure increase? Like it's pretty clear that stimulants will increase your blood pressure and heart rates, you know, like pretty reliably <laughs> in a lot of people. And if you're already predisposed to high blood pressure, like imagine stacking multiple energy drinks on top of that, not the best thing. If you're overweight, adding a bunch of sugar into that equation. If you're not having the energy drinks that are sugar and calorie free, you know, obviously a big factor of the equation. But other than like the stuff you can visually see, like there's no insidious things going on in the drink that are like inherently toxic from what I can tell. Like these are all things that should be pretty like clearly elucidated by breaking down the label. Um, and to me, it seems like it probably breaks down to either sugar content or caffeine content um, at the end of the day. You know, it could be wrong, but that is just my interpretation. I think that energy drink, energy drinks may get demonized unfairly or specific brands of energy drinks demonized unfairly too. When it's like at the end of the day, like you could achieve similar outcomes, but with Walmart caffeine pills and, you know, bags of sugar at the grocery store, you know, is it the energy drinks fault or is it just like the actual ingredient response and, you know, not assessing predispositions and other factors that could be um, confounding here. So anyways, that's my interpretation of it. Um, it's an unfortunate situation, obviously, nonetheless. And yeah, be uh, aware of even stuff that you think is benign, you know, approach it with caution at all times, regardless of what drug you were ingesting, even if it's like the most, you know, addicted to drug on the planet like caffeine, still worthwhile to see. Are you a fast metabolizer of it? A slow metabolizer of it? How's that going to play into your sleep hygiene practices? How's that gonna play into how much you allow yourself to get away with drinking on a daily basis? Um, what does it do to your actual like, you know, nervous system when you take it? Do you get like redlined under your fucking tree when you take it? And maybe you should not be having as much or at all, you know? Some people can't handle very much caffeine at all just because another guy can have a couple cup cups of coffee a day and uh, you know, it doesn't mean that you should be able to too, so. Anyways, that's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplaceforedates.com. Follow me on Instagram, I'm moreplaceforedates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Preventative medicine, hormone replacement therapy platform, uh, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre workout formulas that design myself from scratch, recommended diet model, gaining muscle and sports performance, clothing company that sponsors me. Anything else I'm associated with, it's all down there. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.